Welcome to the Debt Matters Podcast, where we help Canadians find solutions to their debt with licensed insolvency trustees from across Canada. I'm Wayne Kay, and in today's show, we're going to talk about what is debt consolidation and how it works. We're going to dive into why people do it and what are the benefits of doing a debt consolidation. What are some of the pitfalls that you really need to watch out for when it comes to this and where? Where's the proper place? Because if you do this wrong, it could end up costing you a lot of money. So you got to be right when it comes to making that decision. And what's a good alternative to debt consolidation? These are some of the key points we're going to be talking about today with Daniel Maximchuk from L.C. Taylor Licensed Insolvency Trustee in Winnipeg and Kenora. Daniel, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me back, Wayne. Nice to talk to you. Anytime we can help people out with their debt, I mean, it's a great thing, isn't it? It sure is. Yeah, that's why I come to work every day. Yeah, well, and there's so many different, uh, I guess, different ideas out there about debt. So it's nice to hear from somebody who deals with this all the time. And today we're specifically going to be talking about debt consolidation. Because as I mentioned in the introduction, if you do this wrong, it, it could actually be very harmful to you financially. So let's start off with what is debt consolidation? So debt consolidation in its simplest form is really combining multiple debts into a single payment. So if you owe, you know, five different creditors, $2,000, that makes $10,000 in total, that can be replaced by a single $10,000 loan. Uh, That would be consolidating your debt, for example. Okay. That's the easiest way to understand it. And does this happen a lot? Do people consolidate loans? Um. People do, they they certainly try to. So typically the easiest way to consolidate your debt and something that's been happening a lot recently, you know, with the last few years of, of spiking house prices is that people can borrow money from the equity of their house, basically remortgage their house or get a home equity line of credit on their house. They withdraw that money and use that to pay their unsecured debts, such as credit cards or unsecured lines of credit. And that's effectively consolidating your debt because that is taking those multiple debts and combining it into a single debt, which is secured to your house, which is generally at a cheaper rate because the house is collateral, there's less risk to the lenders. So they're willing to lend you that money at a cheaper rate than the 20 to 30% potentially that you're paying on your credit cards. Mm -hmm. And and I'm gonna ask you, what are the benefits of it? And I think that was the key one right there is saving of interest rates. Well, exactly, That's, that's the key one is you can get a lower interest rate, which means that your payments go further because more of it's being applied to the principal rather than the interest. Another benefit and why people like it, even if the interest rate isn't necessarily changing by that much, is that it really simplifies your finances. So instead of having to worry about five different payments with five different due dates and five different amounts, you just have a single payment that you have to remember to only make one payment once a month and your your debt's taken care of for that month. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything else we need to know regarding the benefits of this? Um, stress, right? The simplification wow. really leads to easing of the stress. You don't have to worry about, you know, which one you're going to pay, which one you have the money to pay. Either you have the money for this single payment or you don't. Um, unfortunately, though, because of the house prices recently and the increasing cost of living, debt consolidation has has really become available to a segment of society that owns real estate and not so much to the segment that doesn't because they don't have any assets to borrow against that are, you know, valued by the bank as being secure. So there's been one group of people, people who own real estate who have been able to secure uh, consolidation loans against that. But for people with no assets to secure it against, it's quite tough to get a consolidation loan because if you think about it, if you are a bank with no risk exposure to a certain person, and then they walk into your office and says, hey, I owe all these other people money. Will you give me a, lend, a loan to pay them off? Um, that bank is taking on all of the risk and the other lenders are getting off with full repayment, right? Mm-hmm. So it takes a lot of faith that the bank has in your ability to repay it for them to want to step into the shoes of the other lenders like that, right? With no asset to back the loan up. Yeah, that's a great point. So, and I think, you know, we touched on on stress, but that really is one of the, the most important pieces because if you're living a stressed out life because of all of these payments that you've got going on, that literally can affect your marriage, relationships, work, uh, children. It can affect a lot of people. 
It sure can. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of consumes you, right? Because mm-hmm. you know that if you're not making these payments to these multiple creditors that you have, they're going to be calling, they're going to be looking for the money. And that's another level of stress even beyond that, right? So anything that you can do to simplify your finances and make the payments easier to make, of course, is going to not only benefit, you know, your your wealth down the road, but also your your happiness and and satisfaction with life in the present. So what are some of the things we need to watch out for before we go and uh, sign up for a debt consolidation loan? So you really need to look out for the terms that are being offered to you in this consolidation loan, right? So when you're borrowing money from anyone, there's there's a few key factors to review. So the rate that you're being offered, right, in terms of interest, we talked about how it's great if your consolidation loan is at a lower rate than the debt you're already um, trying to pay. But if it's at the same rate or higher, especially if it's higher, there it may be in your to your detriment to take out this loan, right? You're going to, yeah, it's simplified as one payment, but if it's at a higher rate because you've had to go to a high risk lender, let's say, then it's actually going to be harder to pay off the debts mathematically, even though it may be, you know, centralized in, in one debt. Mm -hmm. Um, The terms of the loan too, right? How long are they giving you to pay off this loan and what's the payment going to be on it? Because if it's a consolidation loan that is over a short period of time, the payments might be so large that you're not going to be able to make those payments compared to your credit card where, you know, the minimum payment is manageable for you, even if you're not getting anywhere. Um, you know, that's that's a problem. But cash flow wise, getting into a loan that you can't afford to pay is, is just setting yourself up for failure as well. And a third condition to watch out for is that a lot of um, consolidation loans, when you, when you approach them for one, they're going to maybe ask for a cosigner, somebody to sign that debt along with you. And when you get asked for a cosigner, you really have to realize that a cosigner is basically a co-payer, right? If you're not paying the debt, they're going to be expecting the co-payer, the cosigner to pay all of the debt, not a certain percentage of it. They're responsible for a hundred percent of the debt if you can't pay it. So if you're going for this consolidation loan, because you might be having trouble paying, paying your bills as they currently stand, it's probably not wise to commit someone else to also paying those bills, right? Mm -hmm. That's just um, bringing someone else into your problem. But you see, there's probably, they feel like there's no way out. They don't know about other options at that point. And so they go down to whatever, maybe they saw some ads on TV of some company that can help them out. And some of them can be ruthless. Yeah, I mean, they, they see the, person coming into their office looking for this loan as as a high risk and they charge high interest rates accordingly because they know that a certain number of these people are going to likely default on these loans. So they have to make enough money and interest from the others to cover their losses on those, right? So, um, and, and getting a cosigner is a way to reduce the likelihood of someone defaulting because of course they're going to have better luck trying to collect from two people than one person, right? right? Even if the other person is just as financially weak as you, um, they're doubling their odds that they're going to be able to get something from someone, mm-hmm. right? So that's that's the problem. They, they, you know, we have consolidation loans, come and, and borrow this money and we'll set you up. But, you know, you might not be getting ahead because your interest rate might be even higher or, um, you know, it's not manageable because the monthly payment that they're looking for is just too high. Let's say uh, there's somebody listening who really isn't up to date on on what's going on with interest rates. So when we say high interest rates, a lot of people maybe don't even look at the interest rate that's on a credit card. But that can be, typically they start in the, the 19, 20, 21%. So, and then if you have a, a mortgage, well, that, then that rate can be down in the you know, 2.5%, uh, maybe, maybe less if they signed a couple of years ago. So we have a big swath there from 2.5 to 21% and over. So would you say the warnings for people is stay away from anything over 21%? Well, I mean, it's hard to put a fixed number on it because it's going to depend on what you're currently already paying on your debt, right? Mm -hmm. If for some reason you were in a loan, you know, a a payday loan or something like that at 40% and you can go and get a, a consolidation loan even at 15 or 20%, um, even though it's you know a high interest rate, relatively speaking, it's still quite low. It's, it's half as much as what you're already paying, right? So that might turn the table so that that debt is now manageable for you. So mm-hmm. it's hard to put kind of a fixed numbers to anything above this, you know, you should avoid. But 
I think it's important, you know, when you're evaluating whether you accept this consolidation loan is, you know, is it manageable? Is it going to really solve your debt problem? Because if it's just moving debt from one pile to another, but you're still not going to be able to pay it off anytime soon, um, that's when you really want to look at other options besides just, you know, borrowing money to pay money and still ending up with the same amount of debt as well. Right. And we're going to talk about some of those alternatives coming up in just a bit. But first, I thought I would ask, you know, where do you apply for debt consolidation? So, I mean, the most common place that people apply and and probably where they're most likely to be accepted is at their existing bank or wherever they have currently owe the most money to. Because as I said earlier, it's unlikely or less likely that a bank that you have no prior experience with is going to lend you money to relieve the debts of other banks that you're institutions that you already owe the money to, right? If you already have most of your debt with a certain bank and it's in, you know, you have a line of credit with them, you have a loan with them and you have a credit card or maybe even two credit cards with that bank, you owe them a certain amount of money. So if you're going to consolidate with them, all they're doing is really changing the form of the money that you owe them. They're not taking on any additional risk. So those kind of consolidation loans are more likely to happen because that bank is already exposed to the risk of you not repaying it. Um, so that's probably where where you would start for that reason and the reason that they they know you best. So they're going to have um, a better idea of whether you're likely to repay them and, and honor the debt uh, in full versus some new bank that you just walked into. Okay, good to know. That makes perfect sense. Uh, let's talk about the alternatives for debt consolidation. So you can't get that loan from your bank. What do you do then? Yeah. So if you can't get the loan at all, or you can only get the loan at terms that you know aren't aren't wise to sign on to, either the interest rate is too high or they're seeking a co-signer, like we mentioned earlier, then you need to look at other options because your current debt load is not sustainable, even if it was restructured, you know, through a consolidation loan. And that brings us to alternatives where, you know, you you accept that the debt is just too high. You're not going to be able to pay it off in full with the interest rates that they're looking for. And the only legal solution to deal with debt like that in Canada is through a bankruptcy or a consumer proposal. So those are things that um, can only be administered by a licensed insolvency trustee. So we get calls quite frequently from people who call and are looking to consolidate their debt. And we ask, okay, well, have you talked to your bank or, or a lender who can lend you this money to consolidate the debt? And unfortunately, they they haven't been able to get the loan or not at terms that are acceptable to them. So what we can offer that is similar in some ways is a consumer proposal, which is similar to a consolidation in that your all of your unsecured debt payments become combined into a single monthly payment that you have to make. And that payment is made to the trustee. So it's it simplifies your finances that way. But where it differs from a consolidation loan is that it's not like the trustee is writing a check to pay off all of your your debts and you're repaying the trustee. Instead, the trustee is negotiating a settlement effectively with your creditors to accept uh, terms that are different than what you originally agreed to. So then you have one payment that you make to the trustee who holds those funds in trust, and then those funds are distributed, prorated to the different creditors that you owed according to the uh, solution that you've negotiated with the trustee. So. There are some similarities to a debt consolidation in that it's a single payment that simplifies people's finances, which is something they're looking for. Um, But unlike a a debt consolidation, which is a loan to pay out other debts, um, because people aren't being paid in full, it's it's a different uh, system. Mm -hmm. I think you also mentioned something very important there. And we talk about this all the time with uh, the podcast. And we talk about uh, when you deal with a licensed insolvency trustee, They are regulated by the federal government and the first consultation is free. And so you mentioned that you get phone calls quite often, people asking, you know, what what can I do? What should I do? And that's a great place for many people to start, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So licensed insolvency trustees um, do free consultations. We can't really take money until a service is, until something has been filed, right? We yep. offer free consultations. They call us, they ask, you know, a lot of financial questions just because, you know, we're known as the people who are regulated by the government and so-called experts in this field. So 
we take those calls and, you know, some people, you know, we just advise, well, you know, you have a house with a lot of equity in it, talk to your bank. Or if that's not an option, then we can talk about consumer proposals and other alternatives like that. Yeah. And, and how do they feel after those phone calls? Uh, the most common sentiment that we hear is is just relief, right? I, I didn't know where to turn. I called this number. I didn't know what I would get out of this conversation, but I'm leaving this conversation feeling so much more relieved um, than I was when I made the call, right? So, so thank you for your time. Thank you for relieving that stress and giving me these suggestions. And, um, you know, that provides job satisfaction to us, even if there's no business derived from it, right? We right. take those calls and we're happy to help because that's part of the service that we provide as licensed insolvency trustees. It should be great if more people made these uh, phone calls before they went and signed on the dotted line. So Daniel, what's some of your final words of advice regarding this topic? So again, we want to just remind people that, you know what, it doesn't really hurt. If you've been to a bank and you've talked about cons- consolidation loans and you just want to know if there's any other options there, it does not hurt to reach out to an LIT, a licensed insolvency trustee. And Daniel, as always, thank you very much for all the help you've given us today and all the advice you've shared. Thanks for having me, Wayne. Take care. Now let's talk about that free consultation from Daniel Maximchuk or any of the trustees at lctaylor.com. You can go to the website there to get yourself a free consultation. Once again, lctaylor.com. And that's it for today's Debt Matters podcast. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your favorite podcast from. And of course, for more information, you can always check out debtmatters.ca. Thanks for listening. 